I want to explain a couple of things that I forgot in the last video. When we did our clear, instead of drawing a line, we just filled a rectangle, and you can see that's much simpler. We start at 0x, 0y, and we go to wx and hy. I'll show you what that looks like. This is 0, 0, top left corner, and then we went for the x, we went all the way over to the maximum width, and then for the y, we went all the way down to the maximum height, and then we put our next corner here, so it just says fill a rectangle from here down to here. And uh, I said delta x, if you're not familiar with delta, it just is, it means change in math and physics. It's commonly used as change. Um, uh, you'll notice that I, in set interval, I passed in not the name of the function, but the name of the variable that holds the function. So when we say function canvas setup, that canvas setup is a name that holds that function as an object or a value. I, I said that I was adding 14 as this line changed. I used, uh, you might remember I, I paused the script and I held the mouse over delta x and it said 14. It was only 14 during that iteration of the set set interval, that, that draw call. It had been 15 the next time, then 16. I didn't mean to make that confusing. And I encourage you, you could draw rectangles now with different colors and lines of different colors. Uh, it would be great, if, I think, if you played with this. I've been playing with JavaScript, animating things and doing stuff like that. That's how I, that's how I know a lot of this stuff. All right, that's... Uh, enough of that let's get started so we want to draw some lines we want to go here and we're going to start drawing vertical lines and horizontal lines so i'm going to jump back to my code i'm going to jump back to my previous code and i'm just going to grab a bunch of stuff um, so i'm going to go here i want to have a number of cells that i want to draw we're going to need to know how many lines to draw so i've just made a constant this value won't change so that i have to i have to set it when i when I declare it, otherwise I wouldn't be able to give it a new value. And there's a convention for putting constants in all uppercase letters and separated by underscores. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab some more code. I'm going to go to my draw call. And here. So I'm going to go to my draw call. I'm going to add another function call called draw board. So that you probably figured out that I'm going to have a um, function that draws the board. And I cannot seem to get that uh, command tilde straight. So let's go to the bottom here. And I did not, I did the same thing I did last time. Oh no. We're going to say, we're going to have a function called draw board. And you might think this is a little strange just to have a function with only two function calls in it. It's a bit, it's a bit terse. But what I'm doing is I'm setting a relationship. I'm saying when you call draw board, all I want to do, all that it takes to draw a board is to draw vertical lines and horizontal lines. Then you can see what it, you don't have to see the details of how that's done. You just know that's what's happening when you draw boards. So it's really easy to under, understand quickly. And then the number of cells, um, we when we call draw board, we passed in this number of cells. You'll notice that num cells is not the same word as draw board here so when you call a function the value you pass in can have is just a variable and then when you declare the function you can say what what variable you want to capture that in so whatever the first value is we want to call that num cells all right we'll go and grab some more code i'm going to grab um, grab there i finally did it I'm going to grab the function called draw vertical lines and I'll explain what this does. So here we've called, we've passed in the number of cells, which was a constant. And now we're passing it to this vertical line. So we're going to draw the same number of vertical lines as we are horizontal lines, so I, which is why we pass in num cells in both places. So draw vertical lines is going to get num cells. And again, it's just it's kind of a coincidence that I've named it the same thing. The same variable I passed into the function is what I'm using in the function to capture that value. But you don't have to. I can call that anything. Uh, if it's zero, we should return. This is a, a termination condition, and I'll explain why that's there and why it's at the beginning. So if if we if if we didn't pass in zero for num cells, and this is the equality operator, I'm saying if num, and this is an if um, a call, uh, it's an if operator. Where uh, it's part of JavaScript where you can say you can say if this is true, if this evaluates to true, if num cells, whatever that value is, is equal to zero. Then, um, then we'll do whatever's in this if block. These uh, curly braces are a block. So if it's zero, we'll do return. Return means get out of this function. Just stop, 
processing this function. You can give it a value as well. You can return something. So whoever called you, I could say, um, you know, like let a equals. And if this draw board vertical lines returned a value, it would be put in the variable a, and we could do something with that. But we're not returning anything. We just want to stop. So we don't we don't intend to capture any values from this draw board vertical. We just want it to. We just we're calling it for its side effects. Not nor in math, a function always returns you a value. Uh, you have your domain and your range, a value from the domain. You call a function with that, and you get a value in the range. Well, this is more, you could maybe call it a procedure. It's just some, it's a list of instructions to follow rather than a calculation to get a value. So if it's num cells is zero, we're going to return. We're done. We don't want to do anything. If it's not, we continue on and we set up some constants. They're not going to change. The x value, we're going to use that for an x coordinate, is the number of cells that we, was passed in. And we multiply it by the cell width. So if number of cells is 20, then cell width is going to be, um, what is cell width? I think we have to define that. So let's go up here. I have that here. Let's make a bar for cell width. And probably I changed that somewhere. Oh, yeah, we set. Uh, we set that. That's where we set. Um, so I want to declare a variable to hold cell width. And then down here, we're going to use that variable. And so uh, we set that to 1 20th of the, the width. So whatever that is, we'll say whatever this number of cells is multiplied by that cell width. So maybe it's 25 and this is number of cells is 20. That would be 450 or something. And then for the y, we set it to 0, which will be the top of the canvas. And then for the for y2, the end of this line, we're going to set it to the height minus anything, any dangling bit of, of height that's not divisible by 10. So if the height was you know, two, 205, we would chop off the 5 and just do the height as 200. And um, then we do the same thing we did before. We set the stroke style. We're going to have white lines. We're going to begin a path. We're going to move to this x which is the, um, you know, okay, so for the number of cells, what we're going to have is if the number of cells is 20, 20 times the width would be somewhere out here, and we draw a line. And then if it was 19, it would be back here, and we draw a line. If it was 18, it would be back here, and we draw a line. If it was 17, it would be out here, and we draw a line. So you'll see what that, uh, so yeah, that's that x is going to stay the same, and then the y1 is the top, y2 is going to be the bottom, and then we stroke that, and then here's the tricky part. Now we call this function itself again with the number of cells minus one. So number of cells, I think we set it to 20. So this is gonna be 20 the first time. And then when we get all the way through, now it's gonna be 19. So it'll call itself again. We're gonna get over here and this will be 19. So now it's not zero. So we'll go, we'll do all this stuff again where cell number of cells is 19 times the cell width. So now it's gonna go not as far over. And then we'll get to the end and we'll call it again and that'll be 18. And now we'll be back up to the top here with 18. It's not zero yet. And we'll do that again. Now number of cells 18 times the cell width, that's gonna be a little bit farther. It's not gonna get quite as far over. And we'll keep doing that until finally when we do num cells is minus one, it gets to be zero. When we get over here, num cells will be zero. This will, now this if will be true. And then we'll go here, we'll return. And then we won't, we won't keep calling ourselves recursively. That's what that's called. And we'll drop out. So that's why this function keeps calling itself. You can see there's a call at the bottom. And then there's a, uh, there's a call. Yeah, there's a call at the bottom to itself. And this terminating function will say, don't call yourself anymore. Just go back to this function, draw board, and then we can draw the horizontal lines. And the horizontal lines are exactly the same. Draw horizontal draw board, draw board, horizontal lines. So I will just copy that. Did it again. And you can see it's the exact same thing. Um, in fact, I should probably make this one function because the logic is only slightly different. It's just how I'm calculating. I'm calculating the height. So I'm changing y um, the, changing how high it is instead of how wide it is. So I'm going to say, you know, draw the line at down here and then draw another line up here 
up here, up here, up here, until I get to zero and then stop drawing lines. But the, the logic is all the same. So now what we should be able to do, I think we can probably run this. So let's go over here, let's go to our thing and let's do, so there you go. See, it happened instantaneously because this is so fast. Um, and you know what, well, how much time do I have? Uh, I'm probably, I have a little bit more time. So I'll just, I'll just end with this. If we go to this performance tab, we can record, we can reload the page and do some profiling and record it. So let's do that and we'll stop it right away. And it'll show us, if we go um, in here, it'll show us what the page looks like. If we highlight that, you can see what's being, um, what's happening here. Timer fired. Oh, you know what? I'm doing this very quickly. Um, and it looks like that, ti that uh, timer fired. This function call took 0.27 Oh no, it took 27.76 milliseconds to run whatever function this was. And then that function did a whole bunch of other functions uh, that each took like these draw lines. So here's draw board and draw lines that took 0 0.16 milliseconds to draw. So JavaScript can draw very fast. You can do some very powerful things with it. And so um, it's okay for us every 100 milliseconds to be drawing these lines because it takes less than a millisecond to draw each one of these lines and probably this whole, yeah, this whole thing took um, 30 milliseconds roughly to draw. So we had a whole 70 milliseconds in between each interval that we could do more logic, more game logic. But of course, let's go back here and fix that. We'll put our set interval back to a thousand. Let's just do it one every second. And then, yeah, then when we reset that. So you can see that our lines have all, we, we just repeatedly drew, kept drawing lines a little bit farther to the left each time. And then we drew the horizontal lines a little bit f a little closer to the top each time. And we end up getting this grid. And that's enough for now.